Welcome to the wonderful world of Classic Banjo. We hope that you enjoy your time on ClassicBanjo.ning. In this section of the site you will find out more about a style of banjo playing from a bygone era, one that is now enjoying a renaissance among banjo players around the world. In our video tutorials we will be giving hints and showing techniques and exercises that will help those new and not so new to classic style learn to play classic fingerstyle banjo. There will be tips, advice and discussion on all aspects of playing, so please post any questions or comments you may have on the discussion forum. But first of all, here is a brief history of the origins of the classic style of banjo playing. The banjo is an instrument of African origin that became popularised in the USA with the start of the travelling blackface minstrel shows during the early 1800s. Almost immediately upon their creation, the American minstrel shows travelled to the UK, bringing the five-string banjo with them in what was possibly the first example of a genuinely American musical phenomenon influencing the British musical scene. The first American banjoist to be heard in Britain is believed to be Joel Walker Sweeney, who was also probably the first white man to play the five-string banjo in America, having learned the technique from slaves on his father's farm in Virginia. He travelled on his own and with circuses throughout the southern USA as a blackface banjo player and singer. He was extremely important in popularising the banjo in the United States and in Britain, when travelling with Sam's Great American Circus. In the late 1840s, banjoist Frank B. Converse also travelled to the United Kingdom as part of a travelling minstrel show. On his return to the United States, Converse began to contribute to and compile banjo tutor books. In his 1865 tutor, Banjo Without a Master, he described new styles of solo banjo playing. These techniques were soon perfected and incorporated into the repertoire of many banjo players of the period. It could be argued that Frank Converse had the greatest effect on the development of a true classic style. Another American who brought a new guitar style of banjo playing to England in the 1860s was Charles E. Dobson, who joined Sam Haig's Georgia Minstrels in London in 1867 and also toured the provinces. Dobson was a skilled player playing many magnificent arrangements. In 1878, Horace Weston visited England. Weston was the first African-American banjoist to achieve a significant reputation. He worked as a stage musician in the UK throughout the 1880s. Weston originally played with minstrel shows such as Buckley's Serenaders and the Georgia Coloured Minstrels. His popularity became enormous and his stage work and private engagements helped separate the banjo from its normal place in the minstrel shows. The new guitar style technique ultimately changed the nature of banjo playing in both countries. A whole new repertoire developed, including many arrangements of popular and classical music. No longer would the banjo be confined to minstrel jigs, reels, or as accompaniment to the singer. In 1881, three American banjoists, E.M. Hall and the brothers James and George Bowie, travelled to perform in the UK. Hall is said to have been the first to play banjo solos with orchestral accompaniment without blacking his face. He and the Bowie brothers were credited with raising the status of the banjo as a solo instrument and were described as the finest banjo soloists ever to play in England. The Bowie brothers decided to stay in England and James became a banjo teacher. He gave banjo lessons to the Prince of Wales, who was soon to become King Edward VII. Maybe as a result of this, the banjo became the craze of high society in England. 
Around this time, in both the USA and England, many banjo clubs and orchestras were formed, and it was rare to find a major city or institution without its own banjo orchestra. A particularly British phenomenon early in the 1890s that helped to boost the instrument's popularity was the formation of a troupe of banjo performers dressed in Piro costumes with white face makeup. Started by banjo teacher Clifford Essex, the Clifford Essex Piros were invited to play for the Prince of Wales and went on to become immensely popular touring the country with their banjo shows. Many of the big name professional banjo players of the classic banjo era played with the Piros. The greatest of British banjo players and the most prolific composer was Joe Morley who played with the Piros for 13 years. He is, to this day, the most highly regarded of all classic banjo composers. There were many other fine banjoists recording at the same time, and Ollie Oakley is probably one of the most famous. At the beginning of the 20th century in America, the top names of classic style were probably Park Hunter, Vess Osman, Alfred Farland and Fred Van Epps. In 1897, Park Hunter and Cadwallader de Mays travelled to the UK and played the most spectacular renditions of the classics. They also played one of the first performances of a composition written in ragtime, a style where the music is written in syncopated rhythms. This ragtime music was new to the UK and was just starting to be recorded in America. Ragtime was soon to become very popular as it still is to this day. Bess Osman made two trips to the UK. Osman was a virtuoso of classic style banjo and his playing brought audiences to their feet. He played mainly ragtime pieces, many of which became the most popular recordings of the time. championed the playing of classical music on the banjo, made a visit to England around the turn of the century, but despite his technical mastery of the pieces, his performances were not well accepted. It appeared the music was just too highbrow for the banjo. Often classic style is incorrectly called classical style, a name that implies that only classical music is played on the instrument. The name classic is used to separate a more classically presented style from that of the early minstrel performers. The music played can be anything including popular, ragtime and even some classical compositions. Of all the American classic style banjoists, my favourite has to be Fred Van Epps. His bright, rhythmic and lively playing encapsulates all that is classic banjo.
From the 1920s, interest in and performances of classic banjo began to wane as the focus switched to plectrum and tenor banjo playing as required by the big bands. This change occurred much more gradually in England than in the United States. British banjo clubs and magazines have helped to preserve an interest in classic style playing. Most of the world's greatest players and composers since the 1920s to the modern day have been British. This has only been a brief description, so please excuse any omissions. Many others have also earned their place in the history, but we have no time to list them all here. There is a link with this video to download accompanying notes and for more information on this great style known as classic banjo.